I got an email today from a longtime viewer, Tom Nelson, in which he asked a very specific question. Now, this is a question I've been asked many times by many people, so I thought I'd take a chance today to read his email and answer this question once and for all. In the email, he says, For several months now, my EDC has been a 357 Smith & Wesson Snubby. From time to time, when discussing defensive guns and ammo with friends, some of them say the 357 is bad about overpenetrating, risking hitting an innocent behind the bad guy. Your opinion, is that a viable concern with the 357 Magnum? Thank you. To answer the primary question about whether you should be concerned with overpenetration with 357 Magnum ammo, my answer is going to be no, you shouldn't be, not any more so than you would be with any other ammo. Now, the main reason I say this is the whole overpenetration thing in a whole is basically just a myth. It's just so much bullshit statistically. The risk presented from you getting a good hit on someone and then that bullet overpenetrating and harming someone behind them or in the distance is so unlikely. In fact, I've been able to find almost no cases of it ever happening, not with police forces, not with individuals, etc. It's just so unlikely that pretending like it's a viable possibility is almost dishonest. Now, maybe if you were carrying long guns, guns that were designed to hit heavy animals and things like that at a distance, you might be concerned. But if you're carrying a handgun, there's not really that much reason to be concerned. They just aren't that effective once they pass through a human body, if they pass through it at all. The real problem comes from when you miss. If you miss, you can't really choose a caliber that's not going to be unsafe to whoever's behind them if you miss them. It's still going to be like you shot at them, because they're the first thing this bullet's going to hit. Or if you graze them, that becomes a danger to people behind them. If your bullet just grazes them or passes through a soft part of their body that has no resistance whatsoever, that might be an issue. But even then, it's probably not a big issue. Because after the bullet passes through someone, not only does it have to make it through them with enough energy to hurt someone on the other side, there has to actually be someone on the other side. You have to actually have someone in direct path of that bullet that doesn't have an obstacle between them and the bullet. Now, in a one-on-one -on -one crime, usually criminals don't choose to attack you when there's a crowd around, so that's probably not much of a concern. But say like in a mall shooting or a mass shooter situation, well, then there's going to be more people around. But in those cases, most people, as soon as the shooting starts, what do they do? They duck and cover, they run, they hide, they seek shelter. Not very many of them are just going to be standing around behind the bad guy. And even if they were just standing around in close proximity to the bad guy, if you get a good hit on him, it's pretty much going to stop a handgun bullet. If it doesn't stop it, it's going to reduce it to the point where it's probably not going to kill someone. And the risk you're facing from the shooter himself is far greater than the risk you're going to be facing from someone shooting the shooter and it overpenetrating and harming you. When you're choosing your self-defense weapon and what caliber you want it to be, there's lots of other things on the list that come far before overpenetration. If you want to consider overpenetration, that's your prerogative. But don't let it overrule things that are far more important. When you're choosing your self-defense gun, the most important thing is that you can actually use it, that you can hit the target with it. If you can actually hit your target, that pretty much reduces all risk right away just because you were actually able to hit what you were aiming at. You choose a caliber that's strong enough to stop the threat. You don't choose a caliber that's so weak that it won't hurt somebody if you graze someone and it goes by, because if it's so weak that it won't hurt somebody from grazing someone else first, then it's too weak to do the job. You probably won't stop the bad guy to begin with, and he'll stop you. There's just tons of other things to consider before you worry about something like overpenetration. Worrying about overpenetration in your handgun is kind of like deciding not to wear a seatbelt because you're afraid you might get trapped in a burning car. You're really ignoring the bigger picture here if you're making that a big issue. So in my opinion, it's just not a big issue. It's not something to really worry that much about. Like I said, you can consider it, but I wouldn't be making any of my big decisions based on something so unlikely. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, let's see it happen all the time. What about those cops in New York? Those cops in New York shot people because they missed the bad guy. And the couple of bullets that did have grazing shots on the bad guy, then hit people behind them, didn't give them life-threatening wounds, gave them minor wounds, broken bullets, fragmented bullets, etc. things like that. Once a bullet hits a person, it loses most of its steam. So in the end, if you want to worry about overpenetration, that's up to you. But it's such an unlikely thing that I wouldn't be making bad decisions in other categories to satisfy my fear of overpenetration. You want to make decisions that are going to increase your chances of surviving a deadly confrontation. You want to make decisions that are going to give you every advantage you can possibly have if someone tries to take your life or the life of your family. You don't want to make decisions based on fantasies, myths, and fairy tales.